Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. On January 1st, 2025, I launched what some called a stupid experiment. I stored an unencrypted Bitcoin seed phrase on three different encrypted cloud storage platforms. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. It's amazing. Those three different platforms were Proton Drive, iCloud with ADP or Advanced Data Protection enabled, and internext.com. Then I transferred 0 0.0009876 Bitcoin to that wallet. Crazy, right? At the time it was worth about $95 and now it's worth a paltry $82 or something. Today we're checking in on this experiment to see if the promises of zero knowledge and end-to-end -end encrypted storage solutions actually hold up in the real world. The assumption is if the seed phrase was compromised by any of those cloud storage providers, the account will be empty. In addition, we're going to double, actually triple down on the stupidity and put two more seed phrases guarding two more Bitcoin wallets on those various cloud storage platforms. So if you like watching a train wreck in slow motion, let's get to it. So to start, let's go ahead and see if those funds are actually still in the Bitcoin wallet. Let's head over to coinstats.app where I set up a wallet portfolio where we can monitor the status of our Bitcoin wallet. Okay, here we are at coinstats.app and this is a really neat application. It's free, by the way. You can monitor your crypto portfolio here and just put all your holdings in and it keeps track of everything. It's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and take a look at the portfolio tracker up here in the upper left and I'm gonna click that. And as you can see, the total net worth in this account being watched by this portfolio is $82.12. So after two and a half months, the Bitcoin is still in this account, which means theoretically that those seed phrases that I sprinkled onto the cloud storage platforms are perfectly secure. Let me be really clear. I don't recommend storing your unencrypted seed phrases in the cloud like I did. This was simply an experiment to test the security claims and integrity of modern encrypted cloud storage platforms. Each of these services promises end-to-end -end zero knowledge encryption, meaning theoretically, even if the company wanted to access your data or were required to by law, they can't even do it. Let's briefly review what makes each of these cloud storage providers as secure as possible. First, Proton Drive from the Swiss company behind the product Proton Mail. Proton Drive boasts zero knowledge end-to-end -end encryption and is located in one of the most privacy-focused jurisdictions in the world, Switzerland. The files that you send to Proton Drive are encrypted before they leave your device and not even Proton can access your data if they wanted to or had to. Next is internext.com. This is a cloud storage provider that started in 2020 and is relatively new onto the scene but their security is robust. They recently upgraded their encryption technology to include post-quantum zero-knowledge encryption. At least that's their claim. This is designed to resist attacks from future quantum computers along with European regulators and elites in the ECB, IMF, and WEF. And the third cloud storage platform I'm using is iCloud with advanced data protection enabled. This is Apple's highest security tier, which expands end-to-end -end encryption to include iCloud backups, notes, photos, and more, rather than just a limited set of services like iMessage. Also, ADP transfers ownership of the encryption keys to the user, thereby eliminating Apple's potential access to your data, at least for the time being until the UK government gets their way, right? Go Apple. Now I need to make a few important notes and disclaimers. This experiment is not conclusive proof that these platforms are 100% secure. Just because the funds haven't been taken doesn't mean the seed phrase isn't compromised. A malicious actor could have accessed the wallet and be waiting for more significant funds to be deposited before taking action. Also, the supposed security of these platforms could be attributed to obscurity. That is, nobody knows about this wallet or where I stored the seed phrases except me and you. So don't tell anyone. Also, with the current experimental design, if one of the seed phrases is compromised, I won't know which storage service is responsible. And with this video, obviously I'm increasing the vulnerability and visibility of my accounts, which does change the risk profile. The standard security protocol would dictate that you never actually store 
your unencrypted seed phrases in the cloud. I personally use a cold storage security system for the majority of my Bitcoin holdings. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I said we're going to be raising the stakes. And in doing so, I'm going to address some of the weaknesses of the original experimental design. I'm going to add two more wallets to the mix, giving us a total of three Bitcoin wallets and three seed phrase backups. And I'm going to store one on each cloud service provider. So it will be obvious if one of the providers gets compromised, theoretically, that wallet will get cleaned out. And to mix things up a little bit, one of the wallets will be on the Liquid Network and another wallet will be on the Lightning Network. So I'll have an on-chain Bitcoin wallet, a Lightning Network wallet, and a Liquid wallet. And I'm going to add an additional 0.001 BTC to each of the two new wallets, bringing the total to 0.0029876 BTC worth approximately $95 million, according to my calculations. This increases the incentive for anyone who might try to compromise these cloud storage platforms and access my seed phrase. I should remind everyone that even attempting to access someone's cloud storage accounts without authorization is illegal in most jurisdictions worldwide with North Korea being the exception. This experiment is purely educational and does not constitute an invitation to attempt to gain unauthorized access to my accounts, nor a recommendation for seed storage protocol. Okay, here are the two new wallets I'm going to use. For the Lightning Network, I'm going to use a wallet called the Moon Wallet. And as you can see, the balance on the account is zero Bitcoin. So I'm going to put 001 Bitcoin in here right now, and I'm going to use a Lightning Network transaction. Let's head over to the Kraken website, and I'll send 0.001 Bitcoin to this wallet on the Lightning Network. Okay, here we are at Kraken, and I have it all set up to withdraw on the Lightning Network. And we're going to withdraw, or we're going to submit a Lightning request. That is, I have to make, make the request first in the Moon Wallet, copy it, and then paste it in here, and then I'll send it out from Kraken. So I'm going to go into my Moon Wallet, press Receive, select Lightning Network, and then I'm going to select Invoice Settings. I'm going to add an amount, 0.001 BTC, confirm the amount, and I have a little invoice here. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it, hopefully, into my Kraken account. And there it is, hopefully, yes. I'll verify the request on the email, and then I will be right back. Okay, the wallet withdrawal request was approved by the email, and hopefully when I press this withdraw button, it will be sent out, and here we go. Gonna enter my 2FA, and there we go. Withdraw successfully submitted. Hopefully that will take a few seconds, actually. It should be very quick, about a minute, and I'll check back on that. In the meantime, I'm going to send uh, another transaction to the Aqua wallet to get the Bitcoin over onto the Liquid Network because the Aqua wallet takes on-chain Bitcoin coming in and converts it to Liquid Bitcoin. Let's go ahead over to the Aqua wallet on my phone and create a receive invoice there. Okay, so here I am at the Aqua homepage. I'm going to press Lightning, set the amount of sats to, I believe it's 100,000, and press Generate Invoice. I'm going to receive this on the Lightning Network, and then it's going to be transferred to Liquid inside the wallet. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard, and then I'm going to go back to my home page, and I'm going to withdraw on the Lightning Network, and I'm going to create a new withdrawal request by, by pressing Manage Requests, Add Withdrawal Request. I'm going to call it Aqua, confirm that address. I'm going to go confirm it on that email again. The request, the request has been approved, and now I'm going to send out 0 0.001 to Aqua. There it is. I'm going to check the destination address one more time. The address looks good. Everything looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and withdraw this. I'll enter my 2FA code, and there it goes. Hopefully those will reach their intended targets. That was a little tricky. And let's go ahead and check the Moon Wallet. Here's the balance on the Moon Wallet. The backup seed phrase is on iCloud. And for my Aqua Wallet, the backup seed phrase is going to be on Interlinked. And that's it. Oh, let me just check the Aqua Wallet and see if it's received anything yet. Nothing yet. I'm sure that will complete in just a moment and we'll see what happens over the next few months. 
after a few months from now, I will give you another update so you can see how these seed phrases are doing or how the wallets are doing, I guess, with their unencrypted seed phrases in various encrypted cloud storage platforms. The sole reason I did this video was because I've used many hot wallets and every single one stores the encrypted seed phrase either on your device or very often they'll send it to iCloud or Google Drive or something like that, but it's encrypted and nobody thinks twice about it. In fact, some people put a lot of Bitcoin on a hot wallet. In fact, some people put everything they have in a hot wallet, which I wouldn't recommend, but why can hot wallets do that and regular people can't put our seed phrase on encrypted storage drives? So I decided to try and see what happens. We'll see. Hopefully the seed phrases will remain secure and my funds will be safe. I did this so we can see together what the security level of these cloud storage platforms is. Thank you so much for following along with this experiment. So far, so good. If you're interested in other videos on Bitcoin security, seed phrase security, or encryption technology, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Stay secure, stay private, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.